Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to look at how to properly use a polygon material in Cinema 4D with cycles. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the uh, material that we'll be using. It's this one, Wood Flooring 044. Um, it's part of our uh, free collection, um, and I already have it saved to my hard drive. So, let's head over to Cinema 4D and get started. Okay, so I have a basic scene set up for us. It's literally just a plane and the cycles environment, uh, and that is it. Um, I've already put in a HDR. In fact, if I just give it a quick render for a second, you'll see we have kind of a uh, default glossy material on there, um, and the reflection from the HDR, and that is about it. So let's get started. I'm gonna take this material that I've, uh, in fact, I'll create a new material, why not? Uh, new cycles object material. And let's give that a name. We'll call it Wood Flooring, if I can spell, 044. And we now have the node editor for it here. So let me just see if I can expand that a little bit, try and make it a bit clearer to see. Um, and then what we're going to do is start bringing in the textures. Now, with a lot of the other renderers for, uh, for Cinema 4D, we have our material converter, which will bring that in for you. Uh, but currently that isn't supported, or Cycles isn't supported, uh, so we have to do it the manual way. So let's grab ourselves a image texture, drag that in, and let's give myself a little bit of room on this side. So with the image texture selected, I can now go to the node settings here and bring in what image this is uh, powered by. So let's head over to with flooring 044 and bring in the color texture first. Like so. And then we'll feed that into the base color of the principal shader. Now the thing we want to check is that the color space is set to color data. It should be by default, so that's fine. Uh, and then we'll just move that up there. Okay, and now we're gonna repeat this process for the other textures. So this will be our reflection texture. There we go. And for this one, what we're going to need to do is go over to the color uh, nodes here and bring in an invert node we want to invert this reflection te uh, texture, making it compatible uh, with the specular input of the principled shader here. So for now, we'll just feed that into the uh, specular. Uh, we will be making another adjustment there, but we'll do that after I've brought in the rest of the textures. And this one too, we want to leave on color data. So next we're going to bring in the, uh, the gloss texture. So let's grab that. Now this one also is going to require an invert node to turn the gloss into a roughness value. And then the roughness value can be fed into, you guessed it, a roughness. Uh, there we go. Um, and then the final texture that we'll bring in for now is the bump map. Now the material does also come with a displacement, um, but it's not really needed for a flat wooden floor like this. Uh, you'll just be causing unnecessary uh, memory usage. So let's just stick with the normal map. I'm gonna go for the 16-bit TIFF because that offers uh, more detail. And there we go. Now before we can plug that directly into the normal, you'll notice this has a yellow output, but this has a purple input. And that's because they're, they're different types of data. Um, we need to tell cycles that this is a normal map. So what we want for that is to go to the vector menu and bring in a normal map node and then you'll see connect yellow to yellow because it's expecting that sort of input and then purple to purple because that's the type of output and input that this needs. Um, and that also gives you overall strength of the normal map which by default is set to one. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, our, that's the basics of our material setup. Um, before we go any further then what I'll do is grab that wood flooring uh, material and drag it onto our uh, our plane there. Now it's looking a bit odd in the preview there, but I'm hoping that's just the preview because everything has been set up correctly, so I would expect this to look right. Uh, two things I do need to adjust actually while I think of it the uh, gloss value here needs to be set to non color data, as does the normal map. 
but the reflection and the color get left on color data. Okay, so with that in place, um, to delete these materials off to make sure I've got the right one assigned. Now when I hit render, we should see, I'm hoping, a wooden floor. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, the maps are clearly in place, they're clearly working, we can see the normals at work, um, the gloss map, obviously the colour. So yeah, we're, we're getting there. A few adjustments though to, to really optimise the, uh, the way polygon materials look in this rendering engine. Um, first we need to adjust the uh, reflection map. So what I'm going to do is add in a colour, um, no in fact I'll bring in a converter map node if it's going to let me thank you and we're going to set this to multiply and what this will allow us to do is multiply the uh, reflection uh, texture or the specular texture now cycles is a little strange in the way that it brings things in and so I'm not going to fully explain why we set this so low but what we actually want is a value of 0.3 that might seem ex yeah, extremely low but this has been a well, this has been tested thoroughly and that is the figure we want so let's put that in there and then for the gloss map um, in fact I'll just I'll give it another render because it probably won't look a huge amount different you can slightly see the reflectivities dropping a bit off there now we want to um, slightly adjust the at the moment the, these reflections are quite blurred um, and we want them to be a little bit less blurred, a bit more shiny. Uh, so what I'm going to do there is bring in another math node and then I'm going to multiply this material by um, something like 0.8 or so, something in that region. Okay so let's give that another render and we should see a slightly more shiny look. Yes we do, good. Now the uh, colour management here is a little off, I don't know if there's much we can do about that, let's have a look. Uh, let's lower the exposure a little bit, maybe up the brightness. Just want to uh, get rid of that kind of overexposed sort of look, and that's uh, yeah, that's about right. So uh, we'll leave it uh, there for now. Um, in the next video, we'll look at how to take this material and uh, add to it with some surface imperfections to uh, to make it a bit more realistic. So in summary, we've downloaded a material from Polygon.com, brought it into Cinema 4D, uh, set up the material using the Cycles node editor, and um, made a few adjustments to the reflection and gloss map just to, just to get the most out of the material.